Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now, as you can see, we've reached part 48 in this series, and now we will start talking about the Riemann integral. Indeed, this will be the last chapter we will cover in this series about real analysis. You will see, this notion of an integral is as important as the derivatives we already introduced. Also, this idea can be nicely visualized with the graph of a function. So here you see the graph of the function f, which should be defined on the interval a, b. Ok, now you might already know, the integral of the function f is the orientated area between the graph and the x-axis. We say orientated because there could be a sign involved. More precisely, this means that the parts that are above the x-axis are positive and the parts that are below the x-axis are negative. Hence, at the moment for this picture it does not matter because everything here is above the x-axis so we have a positive area. Ok, but then the question is, how can we calculate this area then? Now, I can already tell you, the overall idea is that we approximate it with rectangles. Indeed, the procedure for the Riemann integral is that one chooses points on the x-axis and then draws rectangles above them. So you should see, if we look at one rectangle here, we already have the width and the height is then given by one value of the function f inside this interval. For example, the picture then could look like this, where we have six rectangles. And of course, the area of a rectangle can be calculated in a simple way. It's just the width times the height. And then we just have to sum up all the areas of the rectangles to get an approximation of the area we are interested in. Hence, when we give the points here a name on the x-axis, so maybe simply x1, x2 and so on, then the width of this rectangle here is simply x3 minus x2. So in general we can just write xj minus xj minus 1. And then, in order to get the area of the rectangle, we have to multiply with the height. For this, the point we choose in the interval to get the value of the function we call xj. Therefore, here you see, this is the area of one rectangle. So in the last step we simply have the sum of all these areas. And in general we can say we have n rectangles that are involved here. Ok, then soon we will see how we can do a limit process n to infinity to get the actual area. In fact, instead of the sum we will use this long s as a symbol. Otherwise it looks similarly because f is involved and instead of this difference here we write dx. So this is the symbol for the Riemann integral and often we put the bounds of the interval a and b at the symbol. Ok, what you really should remember here is that for the Riemann integral we always start with a partition of the x-axis. And then, with some procedure I explained soon, we get to the definition of the Riemann integral of a function f. I always specify the name Riemann here, because there is another important notion, a more modern one, which is called the Lebesgue integral. Of course, in the end, both definitions will describe the same thing, namely the orientated area between the graph and the x-axis. However, it turns out that the Lebesgue integral works more generally, which means you can apply it to more functions. But since the Riemann integral is not hard to explain, it's good to start with it. If you are interested in the Lebesgue integral, I have a whole other series about it. Ok, however here we will explain the Riemann integral, which means we have to start with the partition of the x-axis. More precisely, we will define the name partition of the compact interval a, b. Now you have already seen above, it's simply a set that consists of points we choose inside the interval. Indeed, what one often does is to include the boundary points a and b as well. Therefore, we start with the point x0, then comes x1, x2 and so on. And the last point should be xn. So you see, it should be a finite set. And the defining property of the set 
you also see a buff. So we have an order of the points. Hence x0 is the smallest one, then comes x1 and so on. So we have strict inequalities here. And also x0 should also be a and xn should be b. Okay, so this is the whole definition of the notion partition of an interval. Now for such a partition and a function f, we could calculate this sum here. However, because this could be hard, we should first start with functions f that are not so complicated. In fact, the functions we now consider are usually called step functions. To make everything simpler to read, I now use Greek letters for the step functions. So here we have a lowercase phi. So the function should be defined on the interval a, b, and we call it a step function if it's piecewisely constant. This means if we look at the graph, we only see horizontal lines. Therefore, maybe let's immediately visualize this. For example, maybe the function starts with one value here. Then comes another value here. And then the next one could be here, for example. So you see, it does not have to be a complete constant function. There could be jumps, there could be a lot of jumps, but only finally many. Which means, for example, you could restrict it to an interval, maybe here, and then you have a constant function. Maybe it's also important to note here that the values at the jump points don't matter at all. For example, this is allowed to happen. And maybe you already know why this is, because the area below this graph to the x-axis does not care what this value is. And of course, in the end, we will be interested in this area because it's the integral. Okay, then let's describe this definition of a piecewise constant function in a formal way. And as you might guess, we can use a partition here for the interval a, b. This means that the best idea would be to set these points x1, x2 and so on at these jump points. Because then we have the corresponding intervals where the function is constant. However, then it's also no problem at all fixing these constant values. So let's call them c1, c2 and so on. Indeed, what could happen is that some values coincide. So here we have that the value in this interval is the same as in this one. This is not a problem. The important thing is that for each interval we have such a number cj. Which means we have n of them. Okay, and now we can write down the defining property we've already discussed. Meaning that we can restrict the function phi to an interval. Namely, we can do this for each interval that starts with xj minus 1 and ends with xj. Indeed, in order to avoid these jump points here, we need the open intervals. Okay, and now we know, restricted to this interval, it's a constant function. And the value is given by cj. Okay, and of course, every time you see something like this, it means it should hold for all possible values of j. Well, now you know what we call a step function when we want to define the Riemann integral. So you see, it's not complicated at all. Also, the integral should not be complicated because we immediately see the rectangles here we could use. And then these rectangles exactly describe the area between the graph and the x-axis. Therefore, my question for you would be, can we immediately define the integral for such a step function? Please recall, this is the symbol that is a number that represents the orientated area. This means, in this case, we just have to add all the areas of the rectangles here. So we have a sum that starts with 1 and goes to n. Also, we know the height is given by cj and the width is given by the difference of these two points here. So what we see here is, in this case, the integral is given by this finite sum. However, what we need to answer here is, is this a correct definition? Because at first it seems that there are a lot of possibilities to choose a partition of the interval and also to choose the numbers cj. However, here on the left hand side, neither the partition nor the numbers cj occur. 
In summary, what we need to show is that this here is well defined. Okay, then please think about it and then we can talk about it together in the next video. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.